This is a trauma screening hand exam. Begin by examining the hand for any signs of injury such as swelling, deformity, or laceration. You can also assess for gross function by asking the patient to form a fist, as well as extend the hand fully. Next, you can move on to palpating any areas of concern, assessing for tenderness, and deformity, Next, you can move on to assess the vascular status of each digit. Uh, this can be performed by assessing the capillary refill in the nail bed. The normal nail bed is nice and pink. Pressure to the nail bed blanches it, and it should refill within two seconds. You can also assess the general color of the skin, which is nice and pink, as well as the turgor, which should be nice and full. You can move on to assess the neurologic status of the hand. This can be performed by assessing the three main sensory nerves. The radial nerve can be assessed in the first web space. The median nerve sensation can be assessed at the tip of the long finger, and ulnar nerve sensation can be assessed at the tip of the little finger. Examination of the digits individually can be performed initially with light touch on both sides of each digit. Sharp dull discrimination can also be performed by using a popsicle stick or tongue depressor broken in half. And asking the patient if they can feel anything sharp. Areas of concern can be further examined using two-point discrimination. Finally, you can assess the tendon function of each digit. The thumb has one tendon which flexes the thumb, the flexor pollicis longus which can be uh, examined by immobilizing the thumb and allowing movement at the interphalangeal joint. Uh, the fingers have two flexors. You can examine the FDP or flexor digitorum profundus by immobilizing the digit and allowing the patient to flex only at the distal, distal interphalangeal joint, examining each digit in turn. Next, you can examine the flexor, flexor digitorum superficialis by immobilizing the other digits and asking the patient to flex the free digit. Finally, you can assess the extensor function of the hand by asking the patient to extend all digits observing for any droop or extensor lag at any of the joints of the fingers or thumb.